Welcome to St. Faustine Parish. Please join Father Sean every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon in the Newman Center Chapel for Eucharistic Adoration. Our confession schedule is every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. at the Newman Center, every Friday at 6 p.m. at St. Louis, and every Saturday after 4.30 p.m. Mass at St. Christopher. The sewing ministry is back to meeting at church. All new members are welcome. We will meet on Wednesday, May 5th, and Wednesday, May 19th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We will continue meeting the first and third Wednesday of the month at St. Anthony Church in Forestville. The first Tuesday in May, we will be providing desserts for the Conquest and Meals on Wheels. If you would like to help, call Donna and Chava for the list of desserts they are requesting. Their information is in the bulletin. Thank you. We are happy to announce, beginning Monday, April 26th, the parish office is open to our parish community once again. Our opening hymn this afternoon is number 309. In this place, number 309. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into ever. 
Not even to be mine, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven. That the humble flock may reach where the great shepherd has gone before. Who lives and reigns with you in unity, Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about the good deed done to a brother, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation to anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become a cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord.
This is why the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. And I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was at Duquesne uh, University, most of my classes there were in philosophy. Some of the classes were quite interesting. Classes like Augustine, Aquinas, uh, and even Oriental philosophy. I heard a lot of truth, and it gave me a lot to think about. Well, one of the subjects I studied was called existential phenomenology. Existential phenomenology dealt with things that actually exist. Its premise was that life, film, and happiness only deal with the things that have a tangible existence. One of those philosophers' name was Camus. One of his basic premises was that, was that life is basically difficult, for the most part, meaningless. He wrote a work called The Myth of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was a man in ancient Greek mythology. Sisyphus had been punished by the gods for all eternity. In fact, his punishment was that he had to push a large boulder uphill. When he got to the top, he had to let the boulder roll back down to the bottom. Then he had to walk up and push it up again. Doesn't sound like a very pleasant fate. Camus said that that is basically what life is like. An endless, difficult work without much of a reward. He even went so far as to devote a chapter on why suicide uh, on suicide, why it's a bad idea. I found it ironic why his philosophy led to an ironic conclusion. Sometimes we may be led to this unfortunate conclusion when we may think that life ultimately is as Kambu estimated. Fortunately, life is not like what Kambu says. Life, in fact, is still with meaning. In the Gospel, Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd. In biblical times, people would have been quite familiar with shepherding. Sheep were very vulnerable animals. They would learn the voice of one shepherd and trust that voice implicitly. If he did not protect them, they would have no defense against wild animals. Likewise, the shepherd would learn each one of his sheep what they were like, and he would care for each one of them. He says that he is not like some of the present shepherds. In his time, who will only work for pay. A hired shepherd doesn't have the same bond, the same care and concern for sheep. Jesus is telling us the way that way so we would understand he is leading us. Our relationship to him uh, and to our Heavenly Father. Now, if we understand Jesus' words to us, they really mean a great deal about life here and now. Like a shepherd with a sheep, Jesus knows each one of us by name. He calls each one of us by name and guides us throughout our lives. But it also means we have a great deal to hope in. St. Augustine once said that part of the joy of living as a Christian is looking forward to all the good things waiting for us in heaven. Knowing the end of the journey should give us a great deal of hope throughout the journey. We must also understand our side of the agreement. We are called to become attentive to his voice. It's often quite difficult to discern the voice of the shepherd amidst all the other noises and voices in our lives. That's why prayer is paramount to our faith. If we can become quiet enough, we can hear or reflect upon the Lord's inspirations to each one of us. 
It's also important to become familiar with Jesus in the Scriptures. For doing so will help us to become more familiar with what Jesus is like. And it will enable us, enable the Lord, to use the Scriptures to speak to each one of us. We are also called to imitate his example. As Jesus laid down his life for the flock, we are called to imitate that example. And it's easy for us to see where that will lead us. Living unselfishly leads to a fulfilled life with joy and hope because we are following the shepherd. And as, as a result, is actually sharing in the very divine life Jesus shared with his Father. Camus actually did us a wonderful favor. By exposing life without faith as being meaningless, or rather, by exposing the darkness, he showed us what the light actually is and helps us to see all the joy and peace that our faith gives to our lives. We stand for free. I believe in the name of God, the Father and the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God and to God, God from my name, consubstantial of the Father, who in all things are made. our prayers and our concerns to the altar this afternoon, let's join together and sing number 460, Come to Me, number 460.
lifetime ministry. So that the renewal of God's plan work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just for giving our salvation at all times to find you, O Lord. But in this time of all, Lord, you get more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and every of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with constant joy, every land of your people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they explain. Especially most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
and let you go to her spouse, to hear less of apostles and martyrs. And with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, he denied our unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have named in the world. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, and we have summoned before you, in your compassion, our merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children and scatter throughout the world. Lord, our brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their fastings on this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom. Your gift and joy forever, the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him.
was too lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be
go for it. Singing number 391, Take Christ to the World, number 391. Thank you. 